Hi everybody, this is Silvia from the AIT Austrian Institute of Technology. Right now we are facing urban transformation all around the globe. Cities are growing very fast, they're changing, and we need to adapt and to react to these changes. So that is why today I am checking out our AIT City Intelligence Lab, where our scientists work on solutions and techniques in order to make cities more sustainable, more resilient and also smarter. Let's go! Hello, well, hello you guys! Hello. So we're here at AIT City Intelligence Lab. What is it that you're doing here? We can think of the lab as an incubator for research and technology. And we believe that by bringing cutting-edge research and technology such as artificial intelligence, machine learning or augmented reality, we can change the way we design cities and make them more resilient, sustainable and livable. And in what way is what you're doing here different from traditional ways of city planning? I can say we're not really changing the way we're designing uh, cities. We're just changing the level of information and the speed of information that's available to designers. To give you an example, if you were to create a design for a certain city, you'd have to analyze that design and understand its performance in terms of the climate, the wind, the thermal comfort, the pedestrian movement, the traffic and all of these aspects. What we're trying to do here is integrate these analyses in a real-time and interactive digital planning workflow. Normally, in a traditional planning exercise, you'd have to run these through different experts and like run different like software analysis. What we're trying to do here with the help of machine learning and big data is we can integrate these analyses in an interactive way and allow the designer to understand the impact of its uh, decision in instantly when they're designing. So here at AIT City Intelligence Lab, you're basically replacing architects, don't you? Not at all. We're just trying to empower them by giving them the opportunity to design in a more informed way. We're just giving them enough feedback about their design so that they can make informed decisions. To give you another example, one of the tools we've developed here at the lab is this wind comfort assessment tool. This allows the designer to instantly understand the wind conditions on the site they're designing on the ground. That would normally take hours to simulate, but with the help of machine learning, we are able to do that instantly. So the designer can move a building from here to there, and they can immediately see the effect of that uh, change in their uh, design. Of course, we're not trying to, display to replace experts as well. We're just giving architects and designers as much information as early as possible so that they can make informed decisions before they reach the experts. But thank you, Angelos. Hello, Teresa. So I wonder, what are the key factors one must consider when planning a city? Well, the built environment is a really complex system. So when you're designing a city, you need to understand all of them and consider them. It's climate, economy, accessibility to infrastructure, movement of people and mobility, also green spaces and many more. So in general, you need to understand the relation and connection between those factors. This is why we in the City Intelligence Lab, we are focusing on integrating them already in the planning process, all of them. Because all relevant stakeholders of a design process, they need to negotiate them in a really informed, transparent and responsive way. So the big challenges of our times are climate protection, sustainability, green technologies. How are you addressing these issues? Well, we are developing the tools for people to design with climate protection and sustainability in mind. To give you an example, common phenomena of climate change are heat waves, heavy rainfalls and also really stormy cold days in the winter. So in order to understand the impact of those occurrences to our cities, we need to have simulations and analytic tools. So we are uh, uh, working with those analytics tools and developing them in order to make it more uh, approachable for designers to actually work with them and to test their designs to see how resilient they are. So a word that is constantly all around the place is urban transformation. We hear about cities changing, cities growing, becoming more resilient. How are you addressing these factors? Well, exactly this urban transformation, all those changes need to be reflected in the way how we plan the cities. So in general, uh, as we saw in the last few months, the, uh, the way how we use public spaces and also the transportation can drastically change. So we need to understand this, build up scenarios, simulate them in order to create better solutions in the future to work with that. Well, thank you, Teresa. This is all exceptionally interesting. 
Angelos, what is so special about the CIL? One of the breakthrough developments of the lab is infrared, our intelligent framework for resilient design. What we have done is we've used large data sets of simulations that we've developed here in the lab to train neural networks or deep learning networks as we call them so that they give us instant answers for the performance of our designs. We believe we are unique in this capability to immediately understand the impact of every design decision and that changes the way we're designing. To give you an example, in instead of iteratively testing and analyzing designs one after the other, we can run thousands of them and then explore the design and find optimum solutions for our problems. Of course, we are doing all of this in the immersive interactive environment of the lab, as you can see. So I see a lot of technical equipment around the place. For instance, this HoloLens, and I wonder, how are you using that? Well, the HoloLens, the iPad and the screen, and the physical model, they're all part of an augmented uh, reality physical interface. Teresa, would you like to use this? So, all of these models and simulations are complex to understand, especially for non-experts. What we're really trying to do is take them out of the screen and bring them in the natural environment of designers and planners, which is, for example, this physical model. So what I can do is, while I'm using this tablet, I can make design decisions and I can see the impact of their design decisions in, in uh, real time, while Teresa here is using another device, the HoloLens, can also interact with this physical model and change something while I see it. This collaboration can happen also beyond the boundaries of this lab, with a lab somewhere else in the world, mm -hmm. that allows us to be connected, especially in this time of COVID where we cannot travel, and negotiate design changes in real time and in real space. So Teresa, how is what you're doing in this lab beneficial for people outside? Well, our main contribution is that we enable planners to consider the citizens and their needs from the very beginning in the planning. For example, when you're designing a city, you take the pedestrian comfort, the climate and the walkability as a driving factor to actually achieve a high quality urban environment for our citizens. So at AIT, we're facing one big challenge. On the one hand, we want to be scientifically excellent, but on the other hand, we also want to be a reliable partner for the industry. How do you combine these two worlds in your everyday work? Well, uh, we need to be excellent in both of them. So we refine our research goals by the needs of the industry, but also on the other hand, we push the industry into new grounds by the research, by the fundamental research we are doing here. So in order to achieve excellence in both of them, we take the experience and the insights we gain from our project to refine our research goals and our methods, but also we take the results of the fundamental research and bringing the excellence back into the planned projects we are doing. So what I've heard today is all very exciting. As a matter of fact, I'm considering switching careers. <laughs> Space, I want to come here and work with you guys at the CIL. What qualifications do I need? What level of, of expertise or education do I bring along? Well, we are an interdisciplinary team, so we are all coming from different backgrounds and this is, I would say, our biggest strength. So there's not one set of qualification that is actually needed to work here. It's actually a lot of them and we are always open for new ideas and new skills. So um, one fact is that in our everyday work, we are all using code and programming. So this could be named as one of the fundamental skills. Uh, but in general, I think the shared passion for designing better cities what all of us have in common. Unfortunately, this is the end of my visit now. Thank you so much for having me. But I wonder, after I left, what are your next projects? What's ahead for you next? Well, as we mentioned, uh, one of our main developments here is Infrared, our intelligent framework for resilient design. So throughout the summer, we've put a lot of effort to make this an open online web platform so that everyone can experience the way we design. We believe this will give the people the opportunity to understand our work better. So stay tuned for our website and you will find out soon about the news.